What's going on guys, Steel Twins back at you here with another video and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys some news that the Steelers have been doing so far in the offseason. Last week the Steelers were very, very active in the offseason, more active in the offseason like, than they've been throughout the past like two decades or something like that. So I'm going to be giving you guys some news of what the Steelers have been doing so far. So we're going to get, we're going to get right into it, but before I do that, you guys are probably wondering why I'm only in this video and my brother Danny is not with me. Uh, Danny's been dealing with a personal... It, not, not personal issue, sorry. Personal injury, that's what I meant to say. He's been dealing with a personal injury. Well, I guess you can say it's a personal issue because an injury can be an issue. But he's been dealing with an injury, you know. But he's recovering. He's doing well. He's doing great. You know, he definitely wanted to be in this video with me. But, you know, recovery is just his main priority right now. Priority right now than anything else. So, Danny, big shout out to you. Hope you get better. I definitely know you're getting better. But, you know, I hope you get better quick and fast. And... Yeah, man. Anyway, let's get right into the video. All right, start it off. Steelers free up cap space by reworking the deals of guard David DeCastro and defensive end Stephon Tuitt. Now, before they did this, according to OverTheCap.com, the Steelers were looking at a cap space number of about $4.9 million. Now, obviously, that's freaking terrible. That's literally one of the worst, probably the worst in the NFL in cap space. Like, I don't understand how you can have that much money, that, that low of money in your cash base. I really don't understand. But uh, just a couple days ago, Phil Yates of ESPN posted on Twitter, and I quote, Source, the Steelers have created $13.26 million in cap space for 2018 by reworking the deals of guard David DeCastro and defensive end Stephon Tuitt. Each player reduced his base salary to $790,000 for 2018, converting the rest of his base salary and a roster bonus into a signing bonus. Now, what this means to me, if I can get my notes up, freaking thing, anyway, what this means to me is three things, really. It probably means only one thing to you guys, but it really means the three things. One, obviously, Le'Veon Bell. You know, they definitely want to try to sign him long term because this has literally been the biggest question basically since last season, basically before the off season, and heading into the off season. Like, can they re-sign Le'Veon Bell? Will they do it? Are they going to do it? Is it, are they going to let him walk away? Everything like that. And uh, you know, you got to think about this too. Back in January. Le'Veon Bell said he will definitely sign with the Steelers before February 20th. We're literally a few days away from that very date. Now, I'm not sure if that was fake news or or or, or if he actually said it. I'm not really 100% sure, but if you guys know, please let us know in the comments below. But besides the fact, it, 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 the statement was out there, and we are a few days away, just like I said. So it's going to be interesting to see you know, how the... If there's going to be any news or updates of the negotiations between the Steelers and Le'Veon Bell, you know, before the date or even on that date, it's going to be really interesting. But uh, second, another one, second one is Chris Boswell. You know, Chris Boswell definitely last year won the had a spectacular year. He he kicked like almost 40 field goals, and he made the Pro Bowl. He had an outstanding year. He helped us win so many games, and you know, Chris Boswell is very very. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Very, very, uh, I guess you can say reliable to this team because obviously, you know, this goes way back to Sean Swizzle when he went down. You know, we had trouble trying to find a, you know, a replacement for him after Sean Swizzle went down with an injury, which actually ended up ending his career, I believe. You know, we had trouble, you know, with Garrett Hartley and freaking Josh Scobie, my goodness. But then we ended up getting Chris Boswell and just like Denny would say right now, he would basically say that he's a god, and I have to agree, he's a freaking god. He's he's amazing. He helps us win so many games, and I am so happy that we have Chris Boswell, and I really hope that we do keep Chris Boswell for years and years to come. I really do. And the third thing is, now I'm not sure if this is major to you guys, but Ben Roethlisberger, because he came out and made a statement saying he would like to play for, like, two or three more years. Now, he could be just saying that, but sometimes when you say it, sometimes when you say something, you actually mean it, especially when it comes from a franchise quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger. And he was, and obviously last offseason, he was contemplating retirement. But you got to think, Todd Hilly was our offensive coordinator at the time. But now we got Randy Fishner, who has a long and great relationship with Ben Roethlisberger because 
obviously Randy Fisher was our offensive coordinator. I mean, was our quarterback coach before turning into offensive coordinator. So this could actually make Ben want to play more seasons and play more games. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, with this uh, with this amount of cap space that they have now. It's going to be really interesting to see how they do throughout the offseason. So it's going to be really interesting. Steelers signed Roosevelt Knicks to a four-year deal. I am actually, I am absolutely happy about this. I think it's a great. I think it's great. You know, Knicks is very li- reliable to this team. He's very underrated. He definitely deserves this. He really does with his tremendous blocking, his great special teams work, and he, he is a very helpful runner and receiver. And back to and, and with Randy Fisher as our new offensive coordinator, I really think we're going to use Roosevelt Knicks more in the rushing and receiving game. I really think we will. And Roosevelt Knicks, you know, he came into the league in 2014 as an undrafted rookie free agent out of Kent State as a linebacker. For you guys that didn't know, he was actually a linebacker coming into the draft out of Kent State. But he wasn't able to find much success with the Atlanta Falcons, where he actually switched to fullback in the Cleveland Gladiators of the AFL, the Arena Football League, as he wasn't able to make both teams. He was then signed to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2015 where his success began and he has been with the team since obviously. He became the starting fullback in 2016 when former starting fullback Will Johnson left the Steelers to go to the Giants. Excuse me. In his first year he played very well that the Steelers gave him a one year deal to stay with the, with, with, with the Steelers. In 2017 he had his best year yet as his tremendous blocking for Le'Veon Bell and Ben Roethlisberger, his great special teams work, and him being a very helpful runner and receiver, it actually helped Knicks to make the Pro Bowl by replacing Patriots fullback James Devlin, who was who was obviously going to play in Super Bowl 52. And after that great season that Knicks had, the Steelers thought that he definitely deserved more than a one-year deal, which absolutely he did, as they signed Knicks to a four-year deal back on Saturday. I am absolutely glad that they resigned him. He is a Damn good fullback. Not a lot of fullbacks in the league really get a lot of recognition like they should because sometimes fullbacks can really help, you know, uh, offense uh, offenses a lot, obviously. And that's what Roosevelt Nix does a lot with this team, you know. And I definitely think he's one of the best fullbacks in the league. He's definitely shown it. He's a helpful blocker. He's a very helpful runner and receiver. And he is absolutely great. He is absolutely great in special teams. He's outstanding in special teams. And I absolutely love Knicks. I'm glad he stay, he's staying with the Steelers for four more years. I'm glad he's going to be our starting fullback for four more years. And this is definitely something that he absolutely, definitely deserves. Steelers signed B.J. Finney to a one-year deal. Now, I have, just like Knicks, I absolutely love you know this re-sign. I really think Finney has developed into a very, very good backup. You know, and uh, I really actually think... That he actually would be a great replacement to Ramon Foster because you gotta think about this. Ramon Foster is getting up their age. He's our oldest offensive lineman in the starting lineup right now. He's 32 years old, and B.J. Finney is only 26 years old, I believe. So that's still pretty young for his age. And plus, you you definitely not only want to keep this offensive line young, but you want to keep this team young. You know, B.J. Finney. You know, he came into the league back in 2015. As an undrafted free agent out of Kansas State, he w- he was obviously then signed by the Steelers. Has remained with the team since. He has developed into a very good backup with the help of teammate of his teammates and offensive line coach Mike Munchak. And uh, in case you guys did not know, he actually turned down a second interview with the Arizona Cardinals for the head coaching job. And he's come out and made a statement saying he's going he he's staying with the Steelers. And I'm absolutely glad about that because. Before we got Mike Munchak, our offensive line was one of the worst ever. Like, they couldn't block for shit, and Ben was getting sacked left and right. It was absolutely ridiculous. But when he came in, this offensive line has definitely upgraded and developed to literally one of the best in the league. Definitely top three. Absolutely. Maybe even number one, in my opinion, really. But definitely a top three offensive line. And I am so glad that Mike Munchak is staying with the Pittsburgh Steelers and going to be developing more... Uh, po- possible more future uh, uh, offensive line starters, you know, for the Steelers, you know. But he, but uh, B.J. Finney had help with his teammates and Mike Munchak into developing into a very good backup. And he he has been backing up uh, guards Ramon Foster, David DeCastro, and center Marquise Pouncey. And he has filled in for them whether they've been out with injury or they've just been sitting out for the game, kind of like last year 
uh, in the last uh, regular season game with the uh, Cleveland Browns where he came in. And I think Foster was that, or a penalty, I can't remember. But he came in, he did very well. But his most noticeable game he played in was the Steelers' Week 6 matchup against the Chiefs last season when he filled in for an injured Ramon Foster. And him going up against a strong Chiefs pass rush defensive line, he played very, very well. He played great. He played very well. He, 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 he held himself up. He did very good. And he helped the Steelers beat uh, 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 the Chiefs. And then since that game, he's filled in here and there. You know, if someone's been injured or someone's been suspended or they just sent out. You, you guys know what I mean. He's been filling in here and there, and he's been playing very good. And a lot of eyes are still a nation. He has the potential to be a future starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I really think that... Now, I don't want Foster to go. I really don't. I really feel like he's a very underrated uh, offensive lineman in the league. I, f I really feel like he's top five and uh, guards in, in the league. I think he's an outstanding guard. He's an outstanding player to his offensive line. But he is getting up there with age. And this, I believe this is actually his final year into his contract after signing an extension back in 2016, I believe it was. So, with B.J. Finney developing more with Mike Munchak and more communication with his teammates, I feel like B.J. Finney could very well develop into a, a great and young uh, offensive uh, lineman for us, really. I really do. So, but anyway, I'm glad with uh, B.J. Finney, you know, being resigned. He absolutely deserves it. He's an outstanding backup, and I really feel like he's a future starter for us. I really do. Steelers hire Carl Dunbar as a new Steelers defensive line coach. I am absolutely happy about this. I really am Carl Dunbar. He has experience being a defensive line coach. He's been defensive line coach since, like, 1988 or something like that. I really can't remember, but he has a lot of experience as a defensive line coach. You know, he's coached uh, college teams like Oklahoma State and uh, uh, LSU and uh, just recently Alabama where he was the defensive line coach for two years until obviously being hired as a Steelers defensive line coach. And not only does he have experience in college, he has experience in, in uh, coaching NFL defensive line uh, NFL defensive lines as well. You know, like the Jets, the Bills, the Bears, and his most noticeable team he's been with was the, with the Vikings when he spent six years with them and coached one of the uh, one of the best defensive uh, linemen in history, Jared Allen. You know, Jared Allen was an absolute beast, and he was coached by Carl Dunbar, obviously, and he developed into a hell of a defensive line, one of the best in, in recent history. But Carl Dunbar replaces John Mitchell. I really like it. I really do. I think it adds more discipline. I think uh, with Carl Dunbar coming in as a new defensive line coach, it can add uh, a much faster, stronger, and fierce de uh, defensive line that we already have. Like our defensive line is one of the best in the league. With Cameron Hayward, Stephon Tuitt, and Javon Hargrave, I really do. I really do. I really feel like that this uh, was Carl Dunbar being our new defensive line coach. It will be faster. It will be stronger. It will be more fierce. It will be more aggressive, like it already is. But it will be it will, it will be more dominant. Like the defensive line we already have now. Just imagine how Carl Dunbar could very well progress this defensive line, you know, in the near future. I think it'll be outstanding. I really do. So I'm actually happy with this hiring of Carl Dunbar. And to close out, guys, Steelers hire Tom Bradley as the new Steelers defensive back coach. Now, Tom Bradley, he's been, he has been coaching for a long, long time. Back in, like, 1978, I believe it was. I, believe it was. I can't remember. But he's been coaching for a long, long time. He's been, and he's got a whole lot of experience as a defensive coach, mainly as a defensive back coach. He spent most of his uh, coaching career with Penn State, and many people even thought that he could uh, replace Joe Paterno as the new uh, Penn State uh, head coach, but with the whole Jerry uh, Sandusky scandal that happened back in 2011, I think it was, you know, Joe Paterno ended up getting fired, and, he, and uh, Tom uh, Brandley ended up filling in but it really didn't do too well, and he ended up getting fired. Uh, well, now, I, I want to say, well, I guess you can say he was fired by Penn State. He wouldn't end up having a job until 2014 when he was when he was, when he was hired by West Virginia. But then he left for uh, LSU, where he spent three years as the defensive coordinator, I believe it was. Defensive back, I think it was defensive coordinator. So, But he has a lot of experience as a defensive guy. He's been coaching for a long, long time. He's been mainly a defensive back coach, and he and still has hired 
uh, him as a new defensive back coach, and he replaces Carnell Lake, who has been the Steelers defensive back coach for the last seven years. I really like this move. I think it's great. I think it adds more discipline uh, to the defensive back position. I think it adds more coaching experience to the defensive back position. I really do. I really feel like he's going to add more discipline. I really feel like he's going to add more uh, aggressiveness to this defensive to these uh, defensive backs. You know, Joe Hayden, Artie Burns, Cameron Sutton, Mike Hilton, maybe Brian Allen. If Mike Mitchell's still with the team for some reason, maybe him, maybe uh, 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 Sean Davis, uh, Jordan Dangerfield, if he's still with us, maybe Robert Golden, if he's still with us. So I really like this hiring of Tom Bradley. I really feel like he can develop these defensive backs into great defensive backs that we really haven't had in quite a while. So I, I definitely like this hiring. I really do. It adds more uh, coaching experience to the defensive backs. It adds more uh, uh, discipline to the defensive backs. So I absolutely love this hiring of Tom Bradley. All right, guys, that's all the news I have for you today. If there's more news of hiring, signings, releases, trades, or whatever else the Steelers doing in the offseason, we will definitely let you know. If you guys want to know our opinions on these on Twitter, go follow us on Twitter at Steel Twins. If you guys got Instagram, Instagram, excuse me. If you guys have Instagram, follow us on the Instagram uh, at Steel underscore Twins. And that's it for the video today, you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace!